say Korea? Your dad was in Korea? Yeah. He was there. He did a lot. Got blew up in the Jeep. Saved a couple of guys. Had a metal plate What happened airport. in the Jeep? Hmm? What happened in the Jeep? Uh, yeah, blown up. I don't know if they hit a mine or... So is this your, your grandfather? No, it's my dad and my mom. Your dad and your mom? No yep. kidding. Wow. So Can you stack them? Yes, sir. So... So he served in Korea? Yes, sir. He was there. My uncle, my dad served in Korea, my uncle did. Yeah? Yeah, he told us all some of the stories about what used to happen. They wouldn't let him sleep. <laughs> He's wow. banging on pots and pans all night long, trying to keep him fatigued. Wow. And so it would just, it would become a, a thing. We learned a lot. But it makes you grateful, you know. And they tell people all the time, freedom is not free. Really? It costs. Really? It costs. My family, this is generational you know we we're all i have family in the military now what you do yeah i have two cousins they're over in afghanistan my other he just retired from the army and another one the air corps so my family's given a lot we paid in full <laughs> For everything that america is today we paid in full Hey, you want some water? <laughs> all right. Here, wait. Let me pour it over here. Come I got on. some in the car. <laughs> it's, it's all right. Here you go. Or you just want to sit here I by me? All right. Time. That's cool. Here, <laughs> He's like, hey, you pouring water, bro. I want some of that. I don't think you can drink this water, though. It's not oh. potable. What's your name? Uh, my name is Terrence Cumbie. This is my father, Thelmer Cumbie. Oh, I got, I got, a, I got a fix for that. Don't worry. Oh, you got a fix for it? Oh yeah. You see, when you come, you know it's always windy here, so you, you have to get some anchors, <laughs> and then you anchor it. Because if it's windy, uh, they only have flat stones here. But if they have erect stones, no, this, just in this portion, in here. This is they call this the main area where what stones they call this or? yeah well normally uh generally the governor would be here on days like this and they'd have the ceremony here on this plateau here mm -hmm. and so i guess it was better for them not to have the headstones normally these the the ones where you see the headstones they're they're old they're like mexican american war and some other stuff so it's they're uh, they were here I did, they just transplanted them over or something. And this wind is not even that strong. I can't imagine on a really windy day. No, well, that's why you get, get these, these spikes that are for the plants. And what you do is you take them and you sit one on this side. Oh, oh you wedge it? <laughs> and then you sit one on this side. And then that'll take care of that. But you just gotta, you gotta come often to know. Yeah, so it's a bittersweet day. But if it weren't for them, we wouldn't be here. So you have to honor those that came before you. That's the only way to truly be respectful. You know, if they would come if you were come with, if they were alive, right? when you visit your parents. Absolutely. <laughs> so there's really, there's no difference, except for the fact that they can't talk back to you right now, but in your dreams sometimes, in your prayers, sometimes you get those prayers answered. You might have a good dream about your parent. You get visited? You get, uh, do you get visited by them in your dreams? Um, once, um, well, the funny thing about it is that I've been on a spiritual journey for the last six years and get, 
actual when you're praying and sometimes when you're talking with God, you get an opportunity and you get a visit. And so last time I was here, I was praying and started speaking in tongues. And then I got some a message from my father and my mother. And then I laid down, I was praying, and I was looking at the clouds and then God performed the show in the clouds. Start showing different faces in the clouds. It was a cloudy day. But the clouds literally formed into different faces. And it's just amazing. You know, sometimes you don't really know about God until you find out about God. And then you, oh yeah, God is real. And all we can do is just be glad that he's a merciful God. And this is merciful. You know, my mom, my dad, they didn't get, my dad didn't die in the war. Although he was injured, he was shot, he was blown up. He saved a guy, he got machine gun up and down his legs. And he still was able to help and save a couple of guys along with that. And my mom, she didn't die. You know, she, she basically died when she was in the hospital. She had infection, stopped infection and just went. But neither one of them had a violent death. It, we all have to progress and we, we move on. But when you move on, do you have time to say your goodbyes? And so we had time to say goodbye to my dad when he passed away in 75. He passed away of cancer. And we had time to say to my, goodbye to my mom when she passed in 2018. So it was, it's a blessing. Yeah, yeah. You know, you. I, I, I would hate to get that phone call in the middle of the night, you know, where, oh, well, what happened? You know, well, they're gone. You didn't, well, I wanted to say something. <laughs> I wanted to like, I wanted to hug them. I wanted to do, but we didn't have that opportunity. But in the case of my mom and my dad, well, it's technically it's his day, but how could I come and bring flowers for him without bringing flowers to my mom? <laughs> so the yellow are hers and the blue are his. And so, I don't know. I said, it just, it just makes you worried about how the country is today and how divided everything is. It's just people just so evil. And I'm just not understanding, especially with the climate that's going on now. So many people just don't get it. Like, we're all here. This is paid for. Everybody, especially here, with the blood and sweat and tears of their family members. And for people to be in, in Washington and being evil and lying and just doing so many things and it's just hard. It's hard to look at that. It's hard to look at someone saying that this didn't matter. The sacrifices that my family made, the sacrifices my family continues to make to this day. And it's people play around, oh, 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 it's racism. It's not racism, it's stupidity. Stupidity is what brings you to a point of not recognizing the fact that we're all created. If we were so different, then this air that we're both sharing right now, one of us couldn't survive on it. <laughs> it would just be that simple. We, we couldn't drink water because one of us couldn't survive on water. I mean, that's, that's the way God made it. We all have the same basic principles. We're the ones who put the idiocy and the division of it. And the division just comes from the Lord's enemy because he doesn't want us to be together. He wants us to be divided and so if we're divided and we're constantly at war, then we can't focus on having a relationship with God. And that's what it really boils down to. And I'm not afraid to tell people years ago, hey, I'm not talking about, it's just God is amazing. And it's, it's not about what the minister says, what the preacher says, it's about finding it for yourself. And so I was blessed enough to have parents who instilled that in us and it carries on today because I instilled it in my daughter and it matters. But this is, yeah. this is great. This is, you know, what more, what more could you possibly do than, yeah. so whatever's going on, sometimes you come here, some days I just come, different days. Yeah. And there's nobody here. Maybe a couple guys, there's some guys that always run, they jog, I guess it's feel good jogging in here. Some, sometimes I come there, they're here jogging, but. How far do you have to drive to get here? Uh, about, 
30, 30, 40 minutes. Sometimes I try, well, my dad's brother is in Riverside at the National Cemetery there. So trying to make it to both in the same day is a little bit difficult because from here to there, depending on traffic, is about an hour and 30 minutes. <laughs> so I gotta come 30 minutes this way and then go an hour and a half that way and then come back. So it's an eventful day, miss most of it with the rest of the family, but you try because my, you know when my father passed away my uncle he was there and he stepped in he was also in the army so my great-grandfather my grandfather everybody served in the military it was just what's your profession right now i do construction and i also i'm a counselor for the youth okay. yeah church counseling no i do gang intervention <laughs> yeah I, I, how do they come to you well, some of them come, but the majority of the time you got to go to them. And then you talk to them and you come to find out that they're just lost. They don't have the right guidance, the right opportunities, the right people behind them to steer them in a different direction. And so you make a choice. You make a choice that you feel is the best choice for you at that time. A lot of people judge them. Some do it because that's what they want to do, but the majority of them are just confused and lost. But then the circumstances they find themselves in become more. Trapping. Yeah, so just like you know, when you go in the army, you don't plan to become a soldier and have to go to battle. You go because you feel it's a, your duty yeah. to do. Yeah. But then you call to do something that most people will not do, right. and that's to risk your life to defend the people back at home. And it's sort of the same principle. But we feel like our freedoms are at risk now, nowadays. Definitely, definitely. It's. I hate to call it different parties and different things, but to know the history that I know with, with America and how it was formed, what was behind it and how everything happened, to know how the Republican Party was started by a group of farmers that were trying to actually fight against Democrats to get a fair shake. And now it's been tainted to become something that if you don't like us, if you don't like this, you don't like that, if you don't agree with the things we're doing, then we hate you, you're not American. And that's not what America is about. So it's, it's very threatened right now because where are we as a public? I go, I go and I go to protests and I do things, but we shouldn't have to do that. But this is in a way our time to be called for battle. You know, we have to now fight for democracy at home. And you don't have to put on a uniform, you don't have to carry a gun, but you have to vote. That's your gun, that's your weapon, that's your opportunity to do something. You run for office, become a, a politician that cares, that wants to engulf everybody. And it's not about giving out things or taking things away. This is, this is a great country. It was dedicated to God from the beginning of it. It said, God we trust. So just kind of get back to that. You know, you can't turn around and say, hey, you know, I, I hate this person. I was on my way here and I was looking at the homeless and like, this is, this is sad. You know, I, we're, we're, how can we fix this? Some of it is people are on drugs. They don't want to live because you talk to them. Like, oh, I don't want the responsibilities. I just want to be on drugs. Okay. What makes that a viable option to a person? Like, I just want to live on the street and do drugs. When there's so much that you're missing out on with family, friends, and building relationships with people. So to replace that with drugs, something something happened. Something yeah. happened yeah. severely wrong. Right. And that's where we get it wrong is that we, we're blaming people. Some, some are choices, but some are just victims of circumstance. Right. And we're all, like you say, we're all just a paycheck away from being homeless. So, you know, but hopefully we'll make, we'll make a difference. I'm just, keep praying, you know. I pray, I got a prayer that I do every day. I put it on Facebook and I pray for God to end the gang violence in Compton. Just because if they really understood I think history is important, but truthful history is the reason why we're in the situation we're in now. Because if you knew the importance of where you are and what you're doing, yeah. then you make better choices. Yeah. 
I try to, my nieces and nephews, I bring them here just to let them know, like, hey, one of these days I'm going to be here. But they'll still be here, and you'll be here. So bring your kids, bring your grandkids. We, I had family. I was just finding out that the Tulsa massacre, my family, I lost family members just the other day. So one of the, the lady that's still alive is somehow related to my family as my aunt. I'm gonna find out what's going on with that, but there's a lot of pain from racist things that should not occur. And yeah. that's happened to my family, you know? But still and yet, my family, people before me who were living in a time of segregation still decided to go and fight for this country and they died. Some of them were wounded and killed and got honored in battle, but I don't get it. I don't get it. If I think for all of these flags, all of, all of these flags represent families. It represents someone who was important to someone who loved them. It's not just a flag. This is a grandfather, a aunt, a brother, a daughter, and people don't see this. This is nine kids, and <laughs> right now about 15 grandkids. <laughs> you know, this is just these two people here. So imagine the stories of all of the rest of them that are here. You, you can't. But I'm glad to see people. You know that there's people here today, at least. They remember. My knees my oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least they're trying to remember. Is it Terry? Terrence. Terrence. Yeah, Terrence Cumbie. <laughs>